Okay, let's discuss elementary phase behavior of a pure hydrocarbon. An example of a behavior of a pure hydrocarbon as pressure and temperature are varied, uh, consider the case of ethane, C2H6. Suppose a sample of ethane at 400 PSI A and 60 degrees Fahrenheit is contained in a cylinder having a movable plunger. Under these pressure and temperature conditions, ethane is a gas. If the plunger is slowly forced into the cylinder so that the pressure is increased at constant temperature, the gas begins to liquefy at a pressure just less than 500 PSIA. And it is possible to move the plunger into the cylinder without any further increase in pressure occurring. This continues until all of the ethane is in the liquid state. And from that point, large increases in pressure, only small decreases in volume. Okay, let's look at slide number one. Uh, from slide number one, you can see that we are plotting pressure in PSIA against volume uh, of ethane, which is in cubic feet. Uh, if you look at where we start, labeled as A, and we begin to move the plunger in, reducing the area, the gas becomes compressed and moves to point B. As you can see, pressure at this point is increasing. On slide two, you can see that once we reached point B, we hit what's called the dew point. The dew point is where the first drop of liquid appears. At this point, we continue to move our plunger in, which reduces the area, which compresses the gas, and as we move it toward C, more and more liquid appears and less gas appears. One thing you will notice, the pressure does not increase. We will change from gas to liquid, but the pressure does not increase until we hit point C. C is the bubble point. The bubble point is the last point where any gas exists. Beyond C, only liquid exists. And as you can tell from slide four, uh, it is very difficult to reduce any volume at this point, but as we try, pressure increases rapidly. Now we will heat the cylinder and withdraw the plunger until the sample of ethane is at 400 PSIA and 110 degrees Fahrenheit is obtained. Evidently, the ethane will be a vapor at these conditions. Once again, force the plunger up into the cylinder and record the pressure. In this case, a curve similar to the one that you see above is obtained and, by, and the outstanding features of this is that there is no sharp change in the shape of the curve. In other words, no dew point and no bubble point are discernible. Repeat the process time and time again. However, with a temperature of 110 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, the curve is going to be the same. No dew point and no bubble point. From this graph, you can see that the temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 709 PSIA is known as the critical point. When a temperature is below the critical temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit, ethane may exist as a liquid alone, as a gas alone, or as a mixture of the two. When the temperature of ethane is above the critical point, there is no sharp demarcation between gas and liquid and no pressure at which gas or liquid 
exist simultaneously. Similarly, for the critical pressure at 709 PSIA. Now let's consider a mixture of hydrocarbons. It is found that a pressure temperature relationship can no longer be represented by a simple vapor pressure curve. Inside the envelope, gas and liquid can exist in equilibrium. The composition of the gas and liquid and their percentages being dependent upon the pressure and the temperature. Outside the envelope, the hydrocarbon mixture is in one phase. The liquid phase exists at the lower temperature and higher pressure, and the gas phase exists at higher temperature and lower pressure. Okay, for the pressure temperature diagram for a mixture of hydrocarbons, we're going to look at case one. If you notice, case one is at a temperature of T1, which remains constant throughout the production regardless of the pressure in the reservoir. So as we start producing oil uh, in the reservoir, the pressure is drawn down to a point of C1. C1 is the bubble point. Uh, above the bubble point, we are in the unsaturated state. Below the bubble point, between C1 and B1, the dew point, we are said to be in a saturated state. Uh, beyond B1, we would be in gas. Now, let's look at case number two. In case two, you'll notice one thing. Uh, C2 and B2 are both dew points. Uh, case two represents a condensate field. As the pressure is reduced, by producing the field, liquid begins to condense out in the formation. Uh, this is a phenomenon known as retrograde condensation. If the reservoir pressure can be reduced significantly, this condensate may revaporize, but one of the chief dangers is that condensate field production is that the liquids will be left behind in the formation at the time of well abandonment. Now, the problem this can res uh, bring about is that liquids forming a, a saturation less than the critical will not move. In order to prevent the loss of condensates in a reservoir, the pressure in a number of condensate fields is maintained at or close to the initial pressure by recycling, Th that is, reinjecting into the formation dry gases after, of course, surface processing. In case number three, we see that no liquid phase is formed, no matter how high the pressure is raised, so that the field containing a hydrocarbon mixture operating on this line would produce dry gas without any condensate problems. Such behavior typifies a dry gas field.